Hi, I'm Kevin Dahani, and today I'm going to show you step by step how to make an elephant mask for the Lion King. I'll use a variety of products and materials, including plaster wrap and paper mache. All of the materials that you'll need to make this mask can be found on my website at theartfulness.com. For the elephant mask, I'm going to start with a lump of WED clay that I had left over from another mask sculpture, and I'll just reshape it and repurpose it. I also have the rest of my supplies, including sculpting tools. I've got some uh, water set out, a bowl of water, and uh, water in a spritzing bottle. And so I'll start out by sculpting the face, and then after that, I'll move on to plaster wrap. The clay sculpture for the elephant head is complete. What I've done for this particular armature is to do a very plain and very basic armature. As you can see, um, I've left the eyes blank. I just have the spaces for where the tusks will eventually go. And the end of the nose is just very unfinished, etc. The reason for that is because I intend to do multiple uh, plaster wrap castings from this single mold and so I need to have kind of a very basic mold that I can do the the plaster wrap and pull them off and do it multiple times if I were just gonna do one casting where I was gonna dig the clay out and destroy it after that one casting then I would have done very fine details I, I would have done everything but in this case it's gonna be very basic very generic and then what I'll do after the plaster wrap is done is I'll go back and I'll use the paper mache clay to do all of the fine details such as the eyes the tusks um, wrinkles on the elephant's face etc and then for the ears I'm uh, in order to keep this uh, headpiece as light as humanly possible I've got craft foam so I'll, I'll make big gray ears out of the craft foam and that will help keep things very light so next step is plaster wrap I'm all ready to do the plaster wrap I have all of my supplies and materials handy I've got uh, the strips of plaster wrap themselves cut up into approximately two inch strips. I have my nonstick vegetable cooking spray. I will spray that all over the mold and that'll act as kind of a release agent that once the plaster wrap is dry, it, it helps to easily pull it off of the clay. And then the only other things I really need are some scissors and a bowl of very warm water. So that's it, ready to do plaster wrap. The two layers of plaster wrap are now dry. So my next step is going to be to remove the plaster wrap casting from the clay. I'm going to try to be as gentle as possible because I want to be able to reuse the clay armature to recast several elephant masks. The two layers of plaster wrap are now done and dry. And so I'm ready to do paper mache. I've got all of my supplies and materials ready. I have my paper mache mixture ready to go. Just need to add some water. And that's just flour, salt, and water. I've got my Scott shop towels cut out to approximate uh, two inch strips. And then I've got about inch and a half strips. Just to clarify, these are the Scott shop towels for glass. Um, there's a couple different kinds. The other kind, which is a much darker blue and a thicker towel, those I have found do not, do not work as well for paper mache. So these work great. Again, these are the Scott shop towels for glass. Um, so that's it. That's all the supplies that I need today to paper mache the elephant. Um, so we're going to get going. The layer of paper mache is now dry. And so after doing a light sanding using 400 grit sandpaper, the next step is to do uh, adding some fine details using paper mache clay. 
Um, and for the elephant, it's probably going to be the eyes. I'm going to add some tusks. Um, and then I'm going to try a technique using tissue paper and paper mache paste. And I'm going to I'm going to create some wrinkles on his face, just scrunching up the tissue paper um, and and uh, applying it with the paper mache paste. For other details like his ears, I need to keep this mask as light as possible, so I'm going to use gray craft foam for the ears. So the next step is, uh, as I said, doing the paper mache clay. I've got my supplies and materials, the paper mache clay, cornstarch, I've got the white glue, and I, I usually do a white glue and water mixture, and I use that to kind of apply the paper mache clay. Um, if you'd like more details on how to make the paper mache clay or how to use it and apply it, just check out. I have got a couple videos that show both of those uh, how to how to both of those things on my website at theartfulness.com. I wanted to show you this technique that I'm doing in order to get a wrinkled skin look on the face of the elephants. So elephants have this really wrinkled skin all over their face, especially across their trunks. And so I found this technique on my friend's website, Johnny Good at ultimatepapermache.com. And what they did was they basically took one ply of toilet paper, um, and I'm just tearing it into really sort of a very thin kind of a strip. And then for the wrinkles, um, I'm kind of twisting it and kind of rolling it up a little bit into into sort of a sort of a more of a straight line and then I've got this mixture a very thinned out paper mache mixture just flour and water but it's super thin and super runny and so I paint a little bit of this mixture on the face of where I want to put this skin and then I just kind of lay and stick down this toilet paper and I go back over it with more of this paper mache more of this paper mache paste and you can kind of see how it's just sticking right to the face of it. Then I go over it with, uh, this is just a plastic painting knife palette, and you can kind of move it around, you can kind of chop it up a little bit. And as you see, once this dries and it's painted, it is gonna have the coolest effect and look exactly like wrinkled elephant skin. So that's just a little tip for you if you want to add some extra special features to the face of your elephant mask. All of the fine sculpting with the paper mache clay is done and dry, and so is the toilet paper skin that I added on to the elephant. That's all been dry now. And so my next step is I made a template for the ears, and I have this gray craft foam. And so I'm just tracing the ear template and I'll cut those out and then I'll just make a slit on the side of the head and kind of stick part of the ear in there and hot glue it. That'll just help keep the ear firmly in place. And then once the ear has been attached, it will be ready to paint. Now that the craft foam ears have been glued on, the next step is to do a primer layer of gesso. I like to tint my gesso, and so I will um, tint it a heavy dark gray color. And then after that's dry, we'll be able to go back and start doing the actual painting. The elephant mask is now complete. I wanted to just give a little bit more detail about how I did the tusks. I used the paper mache clay and basically rolled out the shape of the small tusks and then made sure that the, the top of the tusks was cut flat, which is where they're going to attach to the elephant's face. Since the tusks were a bit thick, I put them in the oven for about an hour on 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Then just to be safe, I let them dry and harden more overnight. Once they were completely dry and hardened, I attached them to the elephant's head using both hot glue and goop adhesive. I use that combination of glues frequently um, simply for things that I want to make sure stay permanently attached. 
I'll put on the goop adhesive and then I'll use just a little bit of hot glue around the edges of, of whatever I'm gluing. So that'll hold the object in place until the goop dries completely, which will usually take several hours. So after the tusks were attached, um, it, they needed to be dried. I painted the entire elephant face and ears first using a dark gray paint and then I brushed on a silver metallic paint that I had diluted with a lot of water. That gave the elephant sort of a, a silvery shimmery effect but it still allowed the gray paint underneath to show through. For his eyes and the tip of his trunk I used a bronze color. Then I highlighted the inside of his ears with some black paint that I had also uh, diluted with a lot of water. I brushed that on and then I kind of blotted it off with a damp paper towel. Again, this accented the ear with the black while allowing the dark gray to show through underneath. I also used the very diluted black paint to accent the elephant's wrinkles. I brushed on the diluted black paint and then I blotted it off with a very damp paper towel. The final step was to attach the baseball cap inside the mask so that it can be worn on top of the actor's head. For a video tutorial on how to do that, just visit the costuming page on my website at theartfulness.com.